Hello. In this video, we're going to take a closer um, and more quantitative look at the operation of the MOSFET differential pair or differential amplifier. Uh, we already know why differential amplifiers are important, uh, especially in the design of integrated circuits. Uh, for one thing, they eliminate common mode noise because the signals are taken differentially. So any noise that is present uh, in both inputs, in both outputs, uh, it gets eliminated because we're uh, we're taking the differential signal, so we are uh, only measuring the difference between the signals. So any common mode noise uh, will get cancelled. Um, and another reason why the use of differential amplifiers is important in the design of integrated circuits is that it allows us to um, uh, it obviates the need for coupling capacitors between stages, if you will, uh, meaning. Since uh, normally in a discrete circuit, you know, we will have um, an amplifier stage and at the output, uh, it will appear our output signal, typically riding on a DC offset, the DC offset being the value of the DC bias point of the output node. In the case of the differential amplifier, we are able to take the output signal differentially or balanced and uh, input that into the next differential input in differential stage. And therefore, any common mode offset gets subtracted. So we don't need to have a coupling capacitor between stages. In integrated circuits, we have seen that the design of capacitors is um, undesirable. It's much more preferable to have transistors uh, replacing capacitors and resistors as much as possible. And therefore, it is desirable to have, even though the differential amplifier arguably has more components, uh, typically that comes in the form of more transistors. Um, and, you know, with the reduction or the elimination of a capacitor, in the case of the integrated circuit design, that would be a good deal. Uh, all right, so, so we have our MOSFET uh, differential pair, which we've talked about uh, qualitatively a little bit. We have seen that it consists of um, two MOSFET transistors, M1 and M2, that I have drawn here, and they are connected such that their sources are connected together. Um, and each one of them is connected to a uh, supply VDD via an RD resistor. Uh, the sources are then tied to a current source which provides the biasing for the two branches. In this case, a current source uh, I've labeled as I, and that means that under balanced conditions, um, let's imagine that the input signals applied were zero, uh, we will have the same amount of current flowing through both branches. So it will divide equally uh, between the two branches, assuming the two branches are symmetrical, transistors are well matched, etc. Which is a fairly reasonable assumption to make in an integrated circuit. Uh, and the output um, can be taken either differentially or single-ended. Uh, when it's taken differentially, we call that a differential output or a balanced output. And it's what I've represented here in my first uh, drawing, labeled one, balanced output. That's what it would look like. Uh, VOD or the uh, differential output voltage will be essentially the drain voltage uh, of M1 minus the drain voltage of M2. So differentially across the drains. In the single-ended output case, you will see it's the exact same circuit, except the output is taken at the drain of transistor M2. Um, another thing to notice, there are two things perhaps to notice here, and uh, one of them is that in the case of the single-ended output differential pair, uh, the first resistor RD connected to the drain of transistor M1 is a redundant resistor. Um, the operation of the circuit will, will not be um, affected or the effect will be negligible if we were to eliminate it. And so sometimes it is omitted. So I'm just going to make a note. I'm going to carry on with it uh, just to make everything more symmetrical. Um, and you know, having better symmetry in this case is a good thing. But just so you know, sometimes you'll, you'll see a single-ended output differential amplifier with only a drain resistor in one of the branches, the, branches where you, the branch where you take the output from. So I'm going to say uh, this resistor is redundant. Uh, sometimes it is omitted. just on the one branch, not on the branch where we take the output from. 
Another thing to notice is that I have represented my uh, current sources at, on the tail end of the circuit as non-ideal sources, meaning they have a finite output resistance that I have labeled R. And the reason why I have done that is because we will see that the output resistance of the current source at the tail actually plays a role in determining circuit performance. And so we're going to see its effect in, um, in the CMRR, the common mode gain, etc. of the circuits. And that's why I represented it that way as an ideal current source in parallel with its output resistance. That would be the, the Norton equivalent or the model for our tail current source. And then the last thing I have drawn is the differential half circuit. This is not another configuration. It's simply a useful analysis tool, uh, analysis slash visualization tool, which is going to help us visualize some of the results. And so we're going to be using it um, here and you know now and then uh, to visualize certain things. So I'm going to keep it present, but it's not a third configuration. It's simply another way of drawing uh, either one of the two circuits. And that is uh, considering the two halves as split halves. So basically we have... Uh, two uh, half circuits, okay? Uh, the first half circuit is the one associated with transistor M1, transistor RD, and then notice that each half circuit has a current source of value I halves, so half of the original value of the current, and that's because we are assuming that um, the current splits equally across the two branches, and therefore... Um, when I combine two current sources in parallel of I halves each, when I bring the two half circuits together, uh, the, the overall result, the equivalent of those two current sources in parallel is a single current source of value I. So I just basically split them. And the same thing with the output resistance of the current source. Um, if I am to split it uh, to each branch corresponds a, an equivalent resistance of value twice the output resistance of the overall current source, so 2R, because when I bring the two halves together and connect those two resistors in parallel, um, the equivalent parallel resistance will be R. Um, so anyway, so we're uh, one more thing actually I want to mention is that uh, typically I will consider each one of my inputs Uh, VG1 and VG2, input voltages, uh, to be comprised generically of a common mode portion and a differential portion, much like we did with the VJT. And so um, VG1 is going to be written as the common mode voltage plus half of the differential voltage, and VG2 is going to be the common mode voltage minus the differential voltage. Okay. Um, so the way to calculate, if I'm given uh, two values, VG1 and VG2, the way to calculate my common mode signal is basically the average of the two, and my differential signal is the difference between the two. I'm going to write that here as well, because it's sometimes useful. So if I want to go backwards and calculate uh, my common mode signal from VG1 and VG2, it's going to be the average of the two. And my differential signal will be VG1 minus VG2. Um, and so for our analysis, we're going to assume uh, this breakup of, of voltages. Um, so we're going to assume that the differential signal VID is equally split between VG1 and VG2. Um, positive VID halves applied to VG1, negative VID halves applied to VG2. Uh, the other thing will be the output voltage, the differential output voltage. is uh, the, We could call it V out 1 minus V out 2 if, if we wanted to consider uh, each one of these nodes to be labeled V out, V out 1, V out 2, uh, but it's also equal to VD1 minus VD2. Whereas my single ended output voltage uh, is just going to be simply VD2. Okay, so that's just a little bit of notation.
Uh, so we're ready to start analyzing the circuit and we're going to analyze it under three conditions, just like we did before, but we're going to go a little bit more in depth. Uh, the first one and the simplest one is when we have a common mode input, meaning all of the input is a common mode signal. What that means is VG1 is equal to VG2, or in other words, um, VID is equal to zero. So the first condition under which I'm going to analyze the circuit, condition A, is when the input is uh, entirely a common mode input. And like I said, that implies that VG1 equals VG2 equals what I've labeled as VCM, the common mode portion of the signal, or in other words, VID is equal to zero. And in that case, uh, we can see because of the symmetry, let's take a look at the first case, the balanced output, which I've labeled as one. I wanna make sure that the labels are clear because we're gonna be deriving expressions for, for both uh, number one and number two or balanced output and, diff and single-ended output. So this is my first case, common mode input. Those are the conditions. And in the case of the balanced output, I can see that the current is going to split equally between the two branches. So ID1 is gonna be equal to ID2. And each one of those is going to be I halves. And if I have I half of current flowing through each branch, then the voltage um, at the drain of each transistor is going to be equal to VDD minus the voltage drop across resistor RD, which is going to be the current I halves times the resistance RD. So that implies my V out one equal to V out 2, and each one of those is simply VDD minus the voltage drop across RD, which is current flowing through the resistor times the resistance. And with this, I can calculate my common mode gain. My common mode gain is, is the gain of the circuit output over input uh, when the signal I apply at the input is a common mode signal, which is the case here. And so ACM Common mode gain will be uh, V out 1 minus V out 2 divided by VG1 minus VG2. In the case of the balanced, um, balanced output, DFA, the output, which is the differential output, divided by the differential input. That's just the general expression for gain. Since my differential output is equal to 0, then the common mode gain is simply going to be equal to 0. Now, important to note, this is in the ideal case where we have assumed perfect matching. And so we are neglecting mismatches. We are going to see how mismatches are going to uh, play a role in um, degrading the, the common mode gain of the balanced defense. So I'm going to for now make a little note here and say ideal case neglecting mismatches. All right, so that's um, an important result, the common mode gain of the balance output defunct is equal to zero. Let's take a look now at the second case, case labeled as number two, which is the single-ended output. And in the case of the single-ended output, uh, we can easily see by looking at the differential half circuit that the single-ended output, if we are to take the output, I'm going to draw it here, V out 2 and V out 1. Uh, if we take the output at V out 2, that resembles a uh, common source amplifier where we're applying the input at the gate, VG2, and taking the output at the drain, V out 2, right? Uh, we still need to consider the input differentially, but we can see that um, the uh, gain of that circuit is going to be equal to uh, minus the overall gain connected, or the overall resistance, excuse me, connected to the drain divided by the overall resistance connected to uh, the, the source. 
And so in this case, negative Rd over 2R, that would be the gain of the differential half circuit, okay, or the um, gain of the single uh, and the differential amplifiers. Um, so let's see, V out 2, V out equals VV2, that's equal to uh, negative VG2, which is VCM. I'll go ahead and write that as VG2 times RD divided by uh, 2R. And VG2 is equal to the common mode signal times RD divided by 2R. Therefore, when I take my gain, common mode gain is going to be equal to V out divided by uh, by VCM, common mode signal. And that's going to be equal to approximately negative RD divided by 2R. Right. Um, and that's it. That's the uh, the value of the common mode gain. Next thing, we're going to take a look at the operation of the circuit um, in the case where we um, apply a differential signal, meaning the, the signal is different between the two inputs, VG1 and VG2. Thank you.